Yeah, so I even think pr prospectively the courts would agree that if um, a person is op is acting in some sort of uh, claiming to act in a in a role pertaining to health interests, then what they owe to society is proof that their judgment isn't convoluted by their religious beliefs. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, back when I would read about Manson's choice to wear cosmetics uh, to more or less help him confront and approach society and large large crowds, uh, I chose to do something along. It, it, I had a similar ethic behind why I chose to be a DJ um, because in school I was never good at um, speeches. Um, talking to the whole class I would I would get too nervous so I thought I need to fight against that uh, now that I've learnt to be that way more or less automatically I need to fight against it and destroy it and so I chose DJing I, did, I tended not to wear cosmetics while DJing unless the um, person who had hired me had had requested it um, But yeah, I'm not completely close to the prospect that in the future people will, children will laugh at the word supernatural. Thank you. I think um, Bowie saw it. Uh, he can see a trend arising where it's going that way and we're starting to go, yeah, like out with the supernatural. Um, for every supernatural judgment a citizen makes, there's one natural error in judgment that they'll make. So we shouldn't give any concession to the claims of the supernatural. You know, our, at the moment we've got... Um, it's like the media companies are trying to say, you know, let's tend to let's let's attend to this uh, sense of this aptitude and capacity for conspiracy in, in society by screening um, documentaries about people trying to prove that the government would conceal evidence of extraterrestrial life and UFOs. Uh, and what I think, all I think is ultimately going on there is now we're in a space age era in history. Uh, corporations can have radars and there's a thousand and one ways that companies can you know violate your privacy rights so I see that manifesting in dreams where uh, members of society are truly having these these dreams about um, the government wanting to conceal knowledge of alien life extraterrestrial life um, I just see that more or less emerging in society because the citizenry don't know how to go about um, safekeeping rights like the Privacy Act in a world where companies can have radars. So there's an element of helplessness there. So when they try to tell the story of that helplessness, it comes out as, you know, oh yeah, the government doesn't want us to know that they already proved the aliens are there. Uh, they didn't want to tell the society it's coming out like that. So yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the lengths of, of idiocy that people can go to, supernaturalists, you know, they could believe that their shit is a, a blessing from a lord, um, and you'd be lucky to, to touch, you know, my shit because I'm, I'm on good terms with Lucifer and the Freemason Church is so much superior to the Christian Church, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, they think that shit doesn't stink. But um, unless they can prove to us empirically that they've found a, a dimension in which we can exist that is not part of nature, then what right have they got to say supernatural, I affirm supernatural anything? The, the, the word is a, a lie. It's beyond nature, it means.
It means beyond the natural. And it ends up being a story about incest in the Garden of Eden. Um, it's, it, it's fucking retarded. You know, uh, they mean they mean to convolute nature and confuse you about nature. That is all that they mean if they say, but we are supernatural believers. And I'm prepared to go as far as Nietzsche once did and say that that is, that is what they do whether they know it or not. Because that's one weakness in reason, is that it is possible to um, misdescribe things, you know. There's a car, car accident and the NRMA report is different to what the Amy report would have been. Lucky you're with Amy, NRMA for H-E-L-P. You know, it's your car, your car crash. Uh, there are insurance claims from both sides. If you were with Amy, would the report on that car crash be the, exactly the same as the report from the NRMA? How do you know? Now, so if human reason can, be, can have its limits, you don't want to even come up with words like supernatural. Now, uh, you may as well wear a shirt saying, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. The word supernatural is a cogent concept. Uh, it's it's coherent and means some and actually means something real. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, ac it actually means they're they're fucking with what's real. That's that's what that's where I think it what I think it comes down to. If you killed the religion out of our political leaders' heads, how how much how motivated would they be to to pacify? Um, foreign countries. You know, we're not invading, we're just, we just believe we're here to help and get to the truth. We just believe we're getting to the truth. You know, that's why, that's why supernaturalism is like a virus. It just, it just moves to eliminate itself. It's like a, a suicide mission. So yeah, as I was saying, um, anyone acting in any sort of healthcare official capacity needs to be able to say that their work is not convoluted by supernatural beliefs, or else they'll come out with stupid assertions like the vid a video console makes you insane. Um, it's like, wow, your church must be fucking incredible if you're coming up with assertions like that <laughs> they didn't have TVs in the videos in the 16th century did they <laughs> so you've discovered video makes people insane <laughs> nice one can uh, so sadly the owners of capital canvas will learn that if they tell me they won't violate my privacy and they do violate my privacy then the trade-off is that um, their business goes public in ways that they were never ready for. And that's an antichrist's response to um, religious discrimination in, in healthcare. So also you could potentially be against ideology. Uh, and men like Gary and Roger will want to say you're part of some sort of ideological cause uh, for the glory of which you would commit atrocities. Um, so you end up working out they're the ones involved in an ideological cause and they do go to certain lengths not to admit it to society. <clears throat> uh, and it's easy to see why, because once they do, they're, they're liable to be uh, indicted for religious discrimination in various ways. Uh, they're also a lot susceptible to be told that they're actually unfit to um, assess, you know, sanity, the difference between sanity and insanity, uh, because arguably that Masonic religion of theirs is... Um, a form of insanity.
So I suppose my advice would be, I mean, you grow up and you do notice that every citizen has some philosophical comprehension of what life means. And that's foundational to how a person lives. So if the re one, one reason philosophy is great and fascinating is because if everyone's like that, you study philosophy only to learn that uh, every way you've evaluated the, the meaning to life is completely debatable and questionable. And you learn that ev everyone is more or less taking certain things for granted simply because they're not um, reading about alternative perspectives. Um, but then one scary realization is that <clears throat> certain people who do enthusiastically subscribe to affirming um, a particular ideological movement um, are going to make error upon error uh, because they're not prepared to call their own beliefs uh, a load of crap. So that's their choice, is uh, see that your beliefs are crap and we don't care about them at all. Um, or make professional errors that will disgracefully embarrass your whole profession. Uh, and that's your only choice at this point. Um, you know, you see it in the 90s, Manson excuses them in hatred. Uh, it's not your fault that you're always wrong. The weak ones are there to justify the strong. Um, pitifully predictable. Okay, another deleted recording. <clears throat> so there you go. The, as I was saying, the video psychosis profile that they're trying to say pertains to me, it would reduce to um, moments where Roger's pharmacy company would, would monitor me in some way at home while watching TV and video and them concluding that uh, if I'm silent while watching a particular video then they can say I believe in everything that was in that video uh, just on the basis of my silence. <clears throat> uh, which in my mind means that I've potentially suspended judgment I'm still evaluating what I watched and I have yet to form um, opinions and views concerning what I've watched. But as I said, they're from the 16th century Masonic Church and they don't uh, accept the concept of suspension of judgment. I think it's a very important concept. Um, it's also important to know what a false dichotomy is if you're given a... Um, you could be given an either-or option by someone, uh, and it could be bullshit. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Uh, we know now both are bullshit. So that's a false dichotomy. Uh, another person also cannot tell you that either you're either for or against. You have to be for or against something. I've questioned that because you can be indifferent. Uh, but the question is, does being indifferent mean you're against something but you don't want to come forward and say why? That's an interesting question, but um, the suspension of judgment is a valid, it, it's a real thing. And uh, its importance was stressed during the centuries of the Enlightenment. So both the Muslims, <clears throat> the, the Islamic Church and the Freemasons don't really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so Roger's uh, religious principle, seeing is believing. He just tries to extend it to absurd lengths. Oh, Luke believes everything he sees on video. He'll be saying shit like that. 
Um, and he thinks it's an innovative profile because Lucifer in his Mason church, uh, it's the 16th century, you know, they didn't have videos then. Surely this will be a, such an impressive profile. <laughs> uh, it's a retarded profile and you just made Capital Chemist look fucking retarded. And someone's got to drive the nail into the coffin and it seems... Like a job for me. Don't say it, I never told you from the start. No disturbing Luke at home. Uh, yeah, Gary and Rogers' first first study should have been why the Freemason Church uh, makes false claims, existential false claims, and is bullshit. Uh, if they were able to work that out, then they would make an intellectual advance. Uh, because at present, I just don't think that if they try to study you, um, their vocabularies just aren't sufficient. They don't ha they don't know how to marshal the right choice of words to adequately describe who you are and what you've gone through. So they'll come up with a They'll just come up with a, some sort of um, uh, daft, superstitious, ad hominem, uh, uh, you know, muck profile, um, as they have with video in this case. Um, yeah, so instead of trying to say that you and I can go crazy from video, they should have... Um, looked into the theological assertions of the Masonic Church and eliminated them as bullshit unless the assertions of the Masonic Church can withstand critical scrutiny uh, and being contrasted against known logical fallacies. Um, the likes of which you might find in the in the ebook uh, how to win every argument um, uh, that book is interesting because it explains how and why reasoning forms of reasoning can be convoluted and uh, prone to mass errancy um, so you learn to be cautious when you study logic, you learn, to, you learn to be quite cautious and reserved, uh, because in the process of trying to say what something is, you might essentially just disclose to the populace that your own mind is so riddled with stupid errors. Uh, so instead of being a successful social scientist, Roger Tolls just pretty much said, you know, oh, have a look at, let me show you how Freemasonry made me a fucking moron full of dumb assumptions, you know, uh, he'll try to interpret your art on your behalf for you, um, he'll try to say the artists that you, you admire are people that you want to sleep with and have sex with, um, but what does that say about him for him to try to make that judgment call, that means He's the sort of person to invade your privacy, watch you watching artists on TV, and preclude that you want to have sex with them after he invades your privacy. Uh, what does it say about him in principle just to say that you can't interpret art that's interpretive? Um, it essentially says he works against the individual's right to think. Um... So if that's what being put onto the Mental Health Act means, uh, people who are, have some sort of degree of professional security because they've started a pharmacy franchise now have the right to work against your right to think. Um, that was the joke talking to the lawyer, the mental health lawyer. They said, well, the Human Rights Act says this. Yeah, but you're on the Mental Health Act. I was like, are you saying I'm uh, not um, human? That I can't comprehend this rights charter? 
Uh, I'd like to go to court then, if you want to try to say that. When can we go to court? Uh, I think it's wrong for health officials, health healthcare professionals to think they can be um, the courts and the cops and the judge and the jury and the executioner and, you know, uh, that they have this profound insight into the into why the human mind may be conflicted. Watching them move on um, against, you know, people that think more critically than them. You know, oh, surely you must be so conflicted that you need these uh, $1,000 a month rebatable antipsychotics. It's like just for trying to say, imply that I'm psychotic, I'd like to take you to court next week as soon as possible. Um, You know, it's wrong. You you work in healthcare because you don't want people to be sick. Uh, not because you want to cull the population and represent as many people as ill as possible because you're invested in risperidone. Uh, that was what I enjoyed about pharmacy, where the, the, the locum saying, you know, if you do your work properly, you won't have people coming into this pharmacy at all because they won't need it because they'll be too healthy. Uh, that's what I admired. Uh, that was why I worked as long as I did in the profession despite the attrition from these religious owners. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they have uh, wacky views like Mother Teresa did that the poverty-stricken are blessed by God. Uh, that God made them especially poverty-stricken so that God could also appoint Mother Teresa to uh, lay them down on, on mattresses and feed them. So their poverty was a blessing so that Mother Teresa could make it better for them. You know, just the fact she thought along those lines I think is disgusting. Uh, but then you watch Gary talking to sick people and he's like, yeah, love, hello, love, hello, love. Like, uh, he, you know, he was fucking married to them. Not, it's not a fortunate thing that these people get sick. But um, that seems to be the path that managers go down. Is they're like, well, we know from our rebates that the antipsychotics are great for our revenue. So somewhere along the line, they lose the view that being sick is not a good thing. And I just think that's not right. That's where I would rather leave. basically a religious believer who is also operating as some form of scientist is a person who believes they can look for something that isn't there and find it um, and that's why I'm against them um, that's why I want to make them regret that they found me So what I have in store for Gary Cairns and Roger Tall begins with them coming forward and saying uh, we genuinely believe that we can look for things that aren't there and find them and then the people of Australia uh, will laugh at them and call them fucking idiots. They'll say we know what matters everybody needs us and we believe we can look for things that aren't there and find them and we'll go huh that's um that's part of what's going to happen I also do genuinely think that Roger Toll's view of homosexuality is uh, its extremely convoluted. He has it tied up in his belief, once again, that it stems out of um, embarrassing moments between the, the person and their mother. And he seems to think along those lines, I'm not gay, but I do defend gay rights movements. And um, homosexuality has naturally emerged as... Uh, a sexual preference for someone in, of the same gender. It doesn't. The focus would be on who they prefer, not um, 
not that they have an embarrass they're concealing an embarrassing moment about them and their mother while growing up. And if Roger Toll wants to continue insisting that's what homosexuality is, I would suggest that maybe there was an embarrassing moment between him and his mother, and because of it, his voice didn't drop, and he moved from Tasmania to Australia and started Capital Chemist. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I see. I think his view of homosexuality is truly offensive to to homosexuality. And Roger's probably a mother. Yeah, I pretty much also think that Roger Toll's view of homosexuality is um, insulting. He seems to have it very tied up in arguments and assertions that a given person has been embarrassed due to an incident, one or more incidents between them and, and generally the mother and the family. He seems to say, uh, I'm not gay, but I do defend gay rights movements, and I think that homosexuality is about um, a preference towards a person of the same gender as, as oneself. Uh, and it's, gen the art, it's pretty much about that preferential valuation not um you know running from um i can the concealment of an embarrassing moment between oneself and one's mother during growing up and if roger Toll wants to persist with saying that about homosexual people then i would suggest he's concealing a, an embarrassing moment between himself and his mother while he was growing up in tasmania and possibly around the time that his voice would have otherwise dropped and been, become emasculated and, and deepened. Um, so ask him, <laughs> ask him how he defines uh, rights movements. Actually, given the capacity for critical thinking that Roger Toll does have, it's impossible to explain why he hasn't mocked the Freemason Church substantially as a load of crap and bullshit unless it does something for him personally. So that's why I've listened to what he's had to say about homosexual people, that he thinks there's the, uh, they were se they've been sexually embarrassed by their father, and there was an embar or there was an embarrassing moment or more between them and their mother, and that's why he thinks homosexuals exist. I think. Uh, that's repulsive, and um, if he's that willing to come forward saying things like that, that confident, maybe there was a moment for him in Tasmania, around his adolescence, um, even, if it affected his voice dropping, uh, and he, he, he had some sexually embarrassing moment between him and his mother, his father told him off for it. So he likes the Freemason Church because Lucifer doesn't tell him off for it. Lucifer doesn't go, Roger, you, you get away from your mum. Uh, Lucifer accepts him in spite of it, even. Otherwise, you know, he wouldn't be profiling people, wanting to profile people in Canberra uh, and tell them that their heads are fucked for various reasons. Unless he was able to, unless he was also saying, you know, the Freemason Church is fucked for these reasons. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he enjoys the Freemason Church. But he knows he'd be a better profiler, and no one would dispute his profiles if he could reason better. So he should be attracted to reasoning so well that no one will dispute his profiles. That should really interest him. But if that really interested him, he would demolish the reasonings offered by the Freemason Church, and yet he doesn't. So, if he's trying to say, you know, videos fucking destroying our heads, there's, maybe there's something about him he doesn't want us to see. And that is whatever the value of the Freemason religion is to him on a personal level. Because professionally, he'd be a fucking, more of a gun. He'd be, he'd be making these profiles that that would actually impress the person who is saying, you know, you suffer from this. And the person would go, wow, like, your mind is amazing. You, what you worked out is so amazing. But instead he's like, the best he can do is, um, 
video, Kill the Radio Star, uh, you know, it, it's so moronic. So I say that him being a fr in favour of the fr of the Freemason Church is because, um, yeah, it might be that. Might be he, some there was some movement or action between him and his mother. His father told him off for it. He hated it. He's escaped it by moving from Tasmania to the mainland and starting Capital Chemist. But he keeps leaking clues back to this event in the claims that he makes, you know, such as gay people are gay because of something between them and their mother. Uh, that's certainly not true. Anyway. It's only, um... No, Roger Toll also wants to insist that um, song lyrics by male singers are of your prescriptive moral comprehension. Um, so maybe back in Tasmania, you know, he hates the he hates remembering the sound of the of his dad's voice telling him off for whatever it was between him and his mum. He says nothing when uh, about female artists and their song lyrics, whether they. He thinks they're morally prescriptive or not. So that's perhaps what I think happened. He was back in Tasmania. You know, if, you, if you're working for him and you make a joke about Tasmanians being inbred, he'll, he'll laugh at that smile. Like, <laughs> so funny, so funny. Uh, but where it gets not funny is where he tries to think he's comprehended the conflicts of your mind. And you end up going, what the fuck? system of ideas are you working from? You wind up getting left with what's well, most probably the conflicts of his mind. Uh, and if that were true and he were hiding that, he would say things like, um, we make no mistakes. And like you said to me in 2010, we don't make mistakes. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> After a certain time, you will realize that uh, if a person accosts you, accosts you, accosts you, then the things that they will say, and even the statements they will make, and the questions they will raise, um. They aren't necessarily uh, to be to be owned up to by you. In fact, yeah. So when men like Roger Garrett cost you and it cost you and it cost you, and you listen to what they have to say, then what you realize is that you don't necessarily you don't own you don't have to own up to their lines of questioning. In fact, the questions they'll ask and the statements they'll make. After a time, you realize they're only disclosing things about them. Uh, if you are a, indeed a rights defender, there are certain things that don't appeal to you and certain things you never do or would condone. And they don't comprehend that. Uh, so, yeah, there, is such, there are such things as stupid questions as well as stupid statements. So you have to think about how you will word uh, your questions. Um, so if you are in, if you if you're trying to research people and you, your epistemology, your metaphysics boils down to the initiative of the, uh, the Masonic Church. You know you may um, you may phrase stupid questions and make stupid statements, uh, and that might be all you do. But uh, my concern is that other citizens who are rights defenders uh, are at risk of being illegitimately put under the Mental Health Act just because pharmaceutical company owners um, find them of appeal to study and observe. Um, it is a concern if genuine rights defenders are being mistaken for dangerous minds. 
um, by men who haven't haven't realized that they can make dangerous errors because they haven't dis nullified their stupid faith, misplaced faith. You know, uh, that's their lesson, I think. That all their faith is misplaced and means nothing. Their beliefs are, are, are rubbish. That's for them to go through and think about how much damage would you do in other people's lives because you won't admit your religion uh, is a bluff and a lie uh, and, a, and, a, and a fraud and it means nothing. Not only does it mean nothing, but you'll mistreat others because you haven't gone against it. So think about what areas professionally you want to be involved in. Do you want to say that you're um, apt to study our study society? By what criteria? Well, we have a, we own a franchise and we go to the Freemason Church. We'll go go study 16th century culture and history. Don't study this century. Like you, you, you've, you've, you, all you've shown is that you are inept and ill-equipped to study this 21st century because you're invested in 16th century uh, church beliefs, and you think it's an edge because the, the church is known for its secrecy. Mm. Well, the secret's out. It's a dumb belief system. It's just another dumb belief system. That's all it is. Uh, the secrecy might have meant it took longer for the rest of this society to call it out and go, well, these Freemasons are just as stupid as, as Cardinal Pell. I'm trying to think of something formulaic that I could say, and that might be that um, <clears throat> perhaps the worst things Roger Toll will try to ultimately say about me, therefore... Uh, things that you could say back to him, well, is that because you're yet to say these things to the Freemason Church? Uh, but it might not just be that. I'm just having a thought. You know, if he says I'm a canary, uh, it might be, well, my vocabulary isn't 16th century um, minimal. I have philosophy that's very minimal. But, um, yeah, it's very hard to try and be a critic and then say, oh, aren't I a great critic? Because uh, now I'm going to this 16th century faggoty church. Um, wow, what a critic. So, you know, he's, so then he'll, he'll tr attract to a rights defender and try to criticize them on the basis of things he has denied himself the need to say and call out on his Freemason church. That's what I sort of think he does. So, you know, he's trying to pick on me in relation to video. Maybe maybe the, the speeches he sees and the talk he sees uh, occur and transpire when he attends a Freemason church are so beyond belief and deserving of criticism that he just goes through the motions but he reserves the criticisms to lump on a member of society instead of instead of his church there's an expression before you criticize someone you should walk first walk a mile in their shoes because that way when you criticize them you are a mile away and you have their shoes I don't think uh, members of a 16th century secretive church that are theistic and positing the existence of non-existing beings make for the best uh, of society's esteemed critics. <laughs> uh, the company of people who are celebrating life daily 
is something that I miss, but I saw a lot of it DJing. You don't see it working in pharmacy. But it's actually very good for your health to be in their company. So I can and have encountered people trying to say and ask, um, do I think I'm greater than, you know, everyone or other people? And the answer is no. Um, but if the alternative option is that you have to accept the Queen's uh, religious story as an account of, of, of humanity. The answer is no, I won't do that either. Um, you know, I see the Bible essentially as a book that is telling you stories that now, in at this time in history, are, um, it's essentially the logistics of um, a series of human rights protests. We would protest the claim that uh, the species originated from acts of inbreeding in a garden, and we would protest that uh, a nice long haired man gets uh, executed. So, th th these Christians who read the Bible as if it's God telling them what to believe in, um, if they accept the crucifix, the crucifixion, uh, they will in turn turn a blind eye to societal injustices because uh, the crucifixion today can only be comprehended as an, inju an un unjust execution you know all the reasons that offered in the bible today we, we, we would um we would not execute someone for those reasons So yeah, the Queen says, to what, what greater source of inspiration can we turn to than to the imperishable truths to be found in that treasure house called the Holy Bible? Well, conversely, I can see that, you know, if a Queen wanted to bolster her ego over the populace, one way she could do that would be, let's tell the population that they're all inbred. And then I'll be sovereign, sovereign, mega, mega sovereign. Tell them they're all inbred and the execution, executed man died for, for them. So they're in, inbred and they have a death on their conscience from 2,000 years ago. Well, that will do their heads in. But then what happens is, you know, if there's a prominent artist or writer or someone, someone some sort of star, the Queen will want to take emotional credit for them and say, well... I've, cre I've I reign over this society and now I've created this prominent person who I'm going to offer a knighthood to. So when she gives a knight to someone, she personally thinks that you know how good is the queen, how good how good she is for m making society the way she has. But then conversely, if um, a pedophile were to emerge in the populace. Uh, and the story of inbre inbreeding in the Garden of Eden did his head in and made him uh, pursue kids. Will Queen Elizabeth II admit that her Bible uh, made a pedophile? Will she take credit for that? So I find that interesting. My option generally is not to be personally interested uh, in monarchism. <laughs> but when I look at it, uh, I do genuinely think that if Queen Elizabeth read a story about inbreeding in a garden and an unjust execution of a nice man with long hair, then she would say, this is a horrible story, uh, I'm not going to... I, I should warn the population that they should be protesting these these six stories. Uh, instead, she calls it the greatest source of inspiration. No wonder she has no king. 
you know, will she go into a garden with Prince Charles and um, do the el electric boogaloo? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Christianity is, is, is sick. It's a recipe to, to be sick and fucked in the head. To turn a blind eye to injustice and to smile as a pr at concepts of like incest. Uh, it's it's truly sick. I would say to the Queen's face that it's sick, and I would like to see her replies, because conflating uh, the image in the image of God with um, you know Cain, the first son of Adam and Eve, Cain, uh, his time came to to make babies. Uh, which woman did he did he find? Oh, the only woman on the earth was his once again his mother Eve. How fascinating. No, maybe sovereignty is a is a bullshit idea. Maybe no one is the greatest. The, and the only way that a person can assert themselves as the greatest is by um, debasing everyone else. Like teaching them that they're all inbred from a garden, as Queen Elizabeth II has. So perhaps she doesn't even believe in these stories herself, but she can see that uh, her sovereignty is reinforced uh, by the because of the way that she uh, imposes endorsement of, of the biblical stories and texts uh, onto the populace, and she and she endorses them as the greatest source of inspiration. Any other philosopher is, is a better source of inspiration. Yeah. You can take the pages of Genesis, the stories of um, incest in a garden, you can spit on them. Uh, if you get diarrhea, you can wipe your ass with the pages of, of the chapters of Genesis. Um, you can grab the story of the crucifixion, spit on it. If you get diarrhea, you can use the, the story of the crucifixion, it's toilet paper. Um, the Greek philosophers, uh, at the same time that Christianity uh, first first launched and commenced, uh, there were there were Greek philosophers around the same time in history that uh, truly had better ideas, better ideas than the Christians. But you will see from history that the Christians were also uh, quite passionately violent. And one way to actually like violence is is to um, go home thinking, well, I came, God made me from incest in a garden, you know, uh, you'll find who these people are because they're tempers, they have really short fuses, um, you challenge their belief system and they don't know what to say so they, they tend to get, get aggressive, think aggressively, Grr. So since the um, basic statements of the Mental Health Act, they don't directly say that they're an affront to the rights charter, but if um, an organization's trying to say you're more or less both, I mean, they can't tell you you're not human, but if they're trying to say that the Mental Health Act applies to you and the, and the Human Rights Act applies to you, it means more or less that healthcare officials will be having you monitored at any given time and I understand that from my work training as well. Uh, so that's very annoying because it means they're contradicting the Privacy Act. Uh, when, when, and when are you truly alone? I definitely do think that the, the uh, prospect of understanding ways in which health healthcare officials can make people sick should be uh, addressed more and talked about more because just putting your your whole life and all your trust in um,
um, there was an ironic element to working in pharmacy that I always enjoyed, which was you tend to get along with everyone you serve if you know that you love, that you hate the fact that the person is sick and has come to you for help. If you can feel that you, you essentially it's ironic, you, ha you have to hate the fact that people have come to you. Like, uh, it's what I was taught by a, a really intelligent locum, sort of said, you, you know, uh, you do your job properly and no one will need to ent enter your store because they'll be too healthy. So when you're serving customers in pharmacy, you feel that you hate that they have even had to come to you in the first place. And then they actually appreciate your effort because, you know, they're not, they're not coming to pharmacy to um, get, you know, get a tent, just get attention or socialize. But yeah, you should uh, also um, protest this idea of, of um, you know, the more sick people, the better. The more sick people, the more rebates and scripts and all that. I don't think uh, I don't think you can indulge that ethic, no, uh, anti-ethic. <laughs> To my YouTube channel that's crap. Is Hello, YouTube channel that's not so crap. Uh, we have a shit channel, don't we? No, we don't have. It's not, not that shit. But I tell you what, we do have shit people in Canberra. Very shit. So shitful that they have no lives. But guess what? I've got one. I will no longer be investing in their shitty little existence. Ah, uh, good on you. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> Good one. Thank you for that. I um, I think, but hard. I operate on a lot of eccentricities, eccentric ideas, and um, I pay attention to the way other people reason that I meet. But um, if their minds are too set and fi are fixed with with certain terminologies, and they try, and you get end up getting binded. Uh, in a way you can't comprehend, then it's better to just retreat. Uh, recluse, rec the recluse fix. Go home and dangle on my own rec recluse fix. <laughs> you know. You can also argue that you're always alone. You always have been. You can never leave your body and everyone is just brain waves. Everything external to you is always, it's always brain waves. So, you know, there's a cliche story that people say, you know, don't, don't like love a woman because of her uh, physical beauty. But you can also, explore the alternative too much too far that you know you love what minds and deep thinking minds and then you explore that to the end and that's what you find you are you are only ever brainwaves she's made of brainwaves and then uh deep thinking becomes the new superficial Hey Graham. How are you, man? So yeah, I do think that uh, society occasionally pitches the argument that if you they think you like you like someone for that for how she looks, um, but for me been told um, uh, I'm a deep thinker to me that's uh, it's more or less the same as saying you know saying saying something about looks if deep thinking ends with um, you know I could never disprove that 
You'll only be brainwaves to me. I'll only be brainwaves to you. Um, I think other people trying to tell you how you love um, makes them pretty fucked. So the Freemason statements actually prove that they believe in the forged and interpolated Gospels. They believe in them as proof that Jesus is an ideological martyr. But I know that they, they genuinely can't believe that once they admit that they're forged and interpolated texts. So strip the interpolated text away and you have the story of an unjust execution. So they, because the Freemasons don't admit this, the two of them in Capital Chemist will essentially study someone who is at home alone and sad and think that they're concealing um, some act they've committed due to an ideological cause that they hold. Um, and that's the error in judgment they'll make until they admit uh, these texts are known to have been uh, plagiarized and forged. And academic scribes and scholars have, scholars have said that for the last 200 years. But the Freemasons are 16th century pufters. So they will be liars and con men until they uh, improve their, their study ability. They actually are closer to being Christian than, than I am. Uh, I'm an antichrist. Uh, you know, how, how, idiot, how, how, what, how much idiocy do they want to uh, uphold? Uh, Jesus was a martyr because our proof is uh, forged texts written, you know, 50 years after he, was, after he was put to death. Well, that's not proof of anything. That's, that's what we've known for 200 years. If I write bu bullshit, oh, Roger Tall can f fart out his ass and fly over Parliament House in a single bound. You know, are you going to say that's Roger Tall's ideological cause to, to blow magic air out his ass and fly over Parliament House? That's Ro Roger's cause, so he, 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 he gets put to death. Uh, he, he fart, he fart flied over Parliament House and, um, you know, he's, he's magic. These Freemasons are idiots. They're pretty, they are pretty much Christians. Uh, yeah. They're still, still dumb believers. That's, um, that's their problem. They've got some arguments that Christians can't rebut, but they can't rebut my arguments. So they think studying me from a distance is uh, interesting. Just admit there's no supernatural world dimension, you dickheads. No supernatural dimension exists. Got it? 16th century?